We now approach a topic that a lot of students kind of shy away from when they first are introduced to it. But in reality, this topic is not so bad if presented correctly. I don't know if I'm going to be the one who presents this correctly, but I'll try. This is all about logarithmic functions, their concepts, and basic use. And the only prerequisite here really is an expanded knowledge of exponential functions. You should be pretty familiar, actually very familiar with exponential functions. We are uniquely, not actually not uniquely, we are faced with a new problem. And what I mean by a new problem is that every time you learn something in the past, like how to solve an equation, you usually, you usually, no, always use inverse operations to solve that equation. In other words, if somebody came along and said, I need you to solve this, x plus 3 is equal to 7, you would say, ah, I need to subtract 3 from both sides. That's because you're doing the inverse of what 3 is doing to the left-hand side. So the inverse of addition would be subtraction. So you'd subtract 3 from both sides. And when you do that, this equation becomes equivalent to x equals 4. And all of a sudden, you have the solution. Well, what about if somebody came along and handed you uh, 3x is equal to 7? Again, you're thinking, OK, I know how to do this. I just divide both sides by 3. Well, really how you should think about it is 3 is multiplying x. How do I undo multiplication? You undo it with division. So you divide both sides by 3. And notice, if you've watched all my lectures, I've been very much focused on teaching this idea throughout this lecture series of doing the inverse of what's happening to x, undoing or untying the knot. So in both these cases, we knew what to do. Same thing if I give you 3 times the square root of x is equal to 7. Well, a lot of people say, uh, OK, first I'm going to divide by 3. So I could go ahead and do that. Let me just put that middle step in here. And then I'll get an equivalent expression, or an equation, I'm sorry, which is the square root of x is equal to 7 thirds. And now, how do you undo a square root? You square both sides. So each time, I'm just looking for how do I undo what's happening to x. And so this implies that x is equal to 49 over 9. Not much else I could do with that. And more recently, we've dealt with things like x to the 2 thirds is equal to, let's say, 8. Or better yet, let's do 4. x to the 2 thirds is equal to 4. Again, you have to think of how do you undo a power of 2 thirds? Well, recently we've discovered that you raise both sides to the reciprocal power, 3 halves. That is the inverse operation. So let's see what happens here. On the left-hand side, powers to powers multiply. So the 2's will cancel, the 3's will cancel. You'll just get x. On the right-hand side, that's like saying the square root of 4, which is 2, to the third power. Or in other words, x is equal to 8. So you've learned throughout mathematics how to undo operations. In arithmetic, you were told you were given addition, and then soon after, you were given subtraction. And then also in arithmetic, you were given multiplication. Soon after, you were given division. And then in pre-algebra, you were given uh, powers, like the squaring something. And eventually, you got to square roots, which would undo squaring something. In algebra, you have raising something to a fractional power, a rational power. And you undo it with the reciprocal rational power. But what happens when we now have a new concept called an exponential equation. And you want to solve something like this. What undoes a variable being raised to some base? Or raised by some base? Basically, what is a, how do you get a variable out of an exponent? I've never had a great way of saying that, by the way. But how do we undo raising x into the exponent? Well, now we have to create something new. Again, always think about the fact that subtraction was really created to undo addition, and division was really created to undo 
uh, multiplication and squaring you can think of as being created to undo square roots and so on and so forth so we need to create a new object to undo this to get X by itself so enter the logarithm the base B logarithm of X written as log sub B that little B is just written slightly below the the uh, line I guess you could say of X so log base B of X is how most people say that log base B of X is the exponent to which B must be raised to yield X and I've never really liked this definition because it's very difficult to digest it's much easier to see it when somebody actually writes out its equation equivalent so let me do that all right that is y is equal to log base b of x if and only if b to the y power is equal to x so if you read this sentence up here and compare it to this statement this equation statement down here we'll see if it works out the base b logarithm of x so the base b logarithm of x that's this junk right here is the exponent oh okay so is an exponent so that's that's saying that log base b of x is just equal to some exponent value to which b must be raised to yield x so if that's saying that if b was raised to this value y it would give us x and look over here b raised to the value of y is equal to x so these are these two statements are saying the same thing and I often say it's the circular argument in fact I usually don't write y equals log base b of x I usually write it the other way I write log base b of x is equal to y no real reason other than that's just what I have a habit of but I use what I call the circular argument say that b raised to y is equal to x and let me write raised to and equal so b raised to this statement log base b of x is equal to y is the same thing as saying b raised to y is equal to x and if you look right here that's exactly what it says b raised to y is equal to x now some people just look at this and get completely flabbergasted they just don't know what to say or what to do they're completely lost until I remind them that you've actually done stuff like this for quite some time for example the cubed root of 8 is equal to 2 really means that 2 raised to the third power is equal to 8 2 raised to the third power is equal to 8 so you have seen this notation before it's just switching forms you're switching in this case from a radical equation to an exponential equation also you've seen it in stuff like this 13 minus 3 is equal to 10 means the same thing as saying 13 is equal to 10 plus 3 so all I did was say that 13 oops 13 is equal to 10 plus 3 it's like this circular argument kind of goes around with everything we know but the idea is you've seen this transformation of form quite often so this idea back here of transforming from an exponential equation to a logarithmic equation while it's new the letters are new the idea of transferring between forms shouldn't be so new try to convince yourself of that by kind of rewinding this and taking a look at this example here again especially uh, the first one the first one is a, a great example of switching forms so let's take a few examples here let's rewrite some exponential equations or th in this case this is a power well let's just say it's a exponential equation write an, exp an equation in exponential form rewrite it in logarithmic form now again remember that our rule of thumb here 
and I will always kind of try to write it off to the side, let me use blue for that, is that log base b of x is equal to y really does imply, and I did a double implication because it goes both ways, that b to the y power is equal to x. And that's using the circular argument, b to the y power, so I'll write raise 2, and is equal to x. So let's transform this into a logarithmic equation. Let's see, that means I'm given this form right here, and I just match up the letters on here with the letters on the log. The base of the exponent is also the base of the log. That's, an, that's probably the best thing to remember. So the base of the exponent is going to be the base of the log. The base of the exponent here is just r. So uh, the base of the log should be r as well. I'll go ahead and write that in. And then I have of something equals something. And then I think about the circular argument. r raised to goes here. So the whatever I'm raising r to should go on this side. And let's see, uh, what am I raising r to? I'm raising r to 7 thirds. So r raised to 7 thirds, and again, using a circular argument, should equal the inside of the parentheses. So look at the, try to do the circular argument here r raised to the 7 thirds is equal to 18. Is that what that says? Yes, it is. So the logarithmic form of this is log base r of 18 is equal to 7 thirds. Now because this is so new, I need to warn you, all you're doing, you're not solving for r here, all you're doing is rewriting this into a different form. The reason why is because you have to get to know this form first. You have to really get uh, pretty good working knowledge of logarithmic form and how to transfer between logarithmic form and exponential form. So we're, that's what we're just playing with here. We're not trying to solve for R or anything like that. Let's do another example. Example B. So we have y to the 4x power is equal to 3t plus 5. It's okay to have a bunch of variables in these problems. All I want to do is rewrite this in logarithmic form. Well, the base of the exponent is y. So that will be the base of my logarithm. I'll write log base y of something equals something. All right. And thinking about the circular argument, as always, I'll say y raised to that power right there should equal the inside. Well, what was y, what was y raised to? The 4x. So I'm going to put 4x over here. y raised to the 4x. And then again, the last arrow, the over arrow, says what it's equal to. It's supposed to be equal to 3t plus 5. And here we have a great uh, logarithmic equation here. Log base y of 3t plus 5 is equal to 4x. That's st Technically that's saying the same exact thing as y to the 4x is equal to 3t plus 5. Just one is written in logarithmic form and one is in e exponential form. Now I really started us off on the harder way of doing things because honestly I think transforming from logarithmic form back to exponential form is very easy. You'll see why. Suppose I give you log base b of 9 is equal to negative 2. And I say please rewrite this in exponential form. That means I'm just going to say b raised to the negative 2 power should be equal to 9. So I'll just write out what I just said. b raised to the negative 2 power should equal 9. Now remember, they didn't ask me to solve, they just asked me to rewrite this in exponential form. So I'm done. Don't go any further. You could solve for b, but I don't want to. Let's just pretend that this is where we're parking it. So let's try another example. Part b. Log base 4 of 36 is equal to 2q minus 1. 
Again, all we're doing is rewriting this in exponential form. And I just use my circular argument. 4 raised to this junk is equal to 36. So I'll use a little caret sign meaning raise there. So let's go ahead and write that down. 4 raised to the 2q minus 1 should be equal to 36. And that's all they want me to do is just to stop there. That is written in exponential form. No need to try to solve. That one would be a wonderfulness to solve, but don't do it. Now I thought I would continue in this video to do uh, to evaluate logarithms, but I think this is good enough to digest right here. I think this is good enough for you to think about. Try some problems maybe if you're in a section in your homework or uh, in your course where you're dealing with exponential or logarithms and you're just learning them. This is a good segment to stop at and to try a few problems in your text. Um, but again, only the ones that say rewrite in exponential form or rewrite in logarithmic form.